Hi, in this video, we're going to continue with the steps of the hypothesis testing. Now, just to review what we have done in the previous video, we covered the basic ideas of hypothesis testing and the step number one, and that is on writing the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. In that video, we have seen some examples of setting or how we set our null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. We also made it clear uh, in that lesson how to distinguish a null hypothesis uh, against an alternative hypothesis. And we said that null hypotheses are those statements that are basically the status quo or statements that contain the equality. That's, that is why or that is this, the reason why the HO are always either equal to a number, greater than or equal to a number, or less than or equal to a given number. Now, uh, just to add an idea on uh, when we write the null and alternative hypothesis, we might fall into that um, uh, challenge on how to write them if we always think that the first hypothesis to write is the null hypothesis. So there will be problems that you will encounter maybe in a form of a test question or a problem given to you as an exercise in that you are supposed to, to analyze and determine uh, what to write as the null and alternative hypothesis. There will be statements that will require you to write the alternative hypothesis first and just uh, set the null hypothesis into an equal sign. So again, it's not always the case that you start writing with the null hypothesis and proceed with the alternative hypothesis. Sometimes it is the reverse. But for the case of the status quo, because the status quo are things that are already established, then you can always start with your null hypothesis. Now again, also in the previous video, I gave one example, uh, and that is on the population mean. Now, to add one example, because sometimes the study could be not just about the population mean, but it could also be about the proportion. So, how do we write uh, null or the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis if the study is about proportion? So, keep in mind that the idea is the same. So, suppose that um, there is a known proportion or a percentage uh, about a certain topic. In this case, it, just look at the example. It is known that the proportion of students who go to a coffee shop uh, at least once a week, so at least once a week, is at least 60%. So you might feel that this is incorrect. Maybe based on your own observation that there, there are less or there is less than 60%. Of the population of a certain maybe in, in a school or the students that go to the coffee shop so that is uh, the statement that is challenging now what is already known so to write our um, null hypothesis so we know that it is at least 60 percent now here the symbol that we use for the proportion is n not mu because mu is intended for the population mean. So when it comes to proportion, we use the symbol P so to, to denote uh, the proportion. Now this P is the population proportion. So do not use the symbol P hat in the null and alternative hypothesis because the P hat is a value taken from a sample. So as I emphasized in, in the first video, the notations or symbols you use in writing the null and alternative hypothesis should be the symbols we use from or symbols that we use for the measures coming from the population and p hat is not a, a value coming from a population because this is a sample proportion so hence our null hypothesis is that p the true population proportion is at least 60% that means greater than or equal to 0.60 and therefore, the alternative hypothesis is the exact reverse because this is the, the one that we want to challenge, challenge. It is no longer greater than or equal to 0.60. It must be less than 0.60. So the alternative hypothesis is H1, P is less than 0.60. Okay? So the idea is the same. It's, it's just that uh, 
the symbol that we have to use is different because we are talking about a proportion and not a population mean. So we use P and not mu in writing. But the idea how to set greater than or equal, writing the reverse for the alternative hypothesis is just the same as how we work on population mean. Okay, so that's what we have done in the step number one. We now go to step number two. And that is the setting of the significance level alpha. And also, we will be covering how do we determine the type of test, the data gathering, um, and the decision rule. What rule should we set in a certain uh, test of hypothesis? Okay, so let's go through my notes. Again, this is the number two step, and this is where we set the significance level this is where we determine the type of test, we, where we set the decision rule, and this will signal us to do the data gathering. That is, we need to find some important values such as the sample mean, if the study is about a population mean, or the sample proportion if it is about the population proportion, and the sample standard deviation is if it is about the population standard deviation. Let's start with the significance level. Now for the significance level, this is what we call the alpha. Its uh, technical definition is that it is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. In the hypothesis testing, it sets the critical region which will determine the conclusion of our test. That is, whether to reject the null hypothesis HO or we fail to reject the null hypothesis HO. To illustrate the idea, let us look at the three diagrams. Now take note that the alpha is the size of the critical region. The critical regions are the ones with color red. In the first diagram, this is the diagram that is produced when the alternative hypothesis H1 says a not equal to a number. And as we can see, that will lead into a two-sided um, critical region. So we have one on the left and one on the right. So as we can see, the symbol that used here is alpha over 2 and alpha over 2 because the alpha that we use is divided into two that is on the left and on the right. For example, if the chosen significance level is 5%, that means the alpha over 2 is 2.5%. So on the left side, it has a 0 0.025 size and on the right side is it also has a 0 0.025 size for a total of 5% or 0 0.05. Now for the one-sided diagrams, if we only have one side, that means the alpha is concentrated on that side alone. So if the chosen alpha is 5%, then this region here will have a size of 0 0.05 in the same way that if the alpha is concentrated on the right side this single region here has a size of 0 0.05 and that is 5% and then next thing that we need to understand is how do we determine the type of test that we are going to use now we know that there are two types of tests the Z test and the T test and we have learned in the confidence interval concept that we use or we will use the Z value when the population standard deviation is known or in the case that the population standard is uh, standard deviation is unknown the sample size must be greater than or equal to 30 now in in a, in a different case if the population standard deviation is unknown at, and at the same time the sample size is less than 30 we can no longer use the Z value and we use the T value instead so that's the same thing for the hypothesis testing. It's either we use the Z-test or the T-test based on these conditions. Once we have determined the type of test that we're going to use, this will lead us in finding the specific test statistic. If we are using the Z-test and this is about the population mean, we have to use the, the formula Z is equal to X-bar, the sample mean, minus mu sub zero, which is what we call the hypothesized mean. The hypothesized mean is the number that you see in your null hypothesis. 
for example, if in the null hypothesis says the mu is equal to 7, then the mu sub 0, the hypothesized mean is 7. And then you use this, the sigma if it is known over the square root of n, which is the sample size. Now, as we said, there are times in which the population standard deviation is unknown. Now, we can still use the z provided that the sample size is large enough and that is greater than or equal to 30. So, we will be using the sample standard deviation in place of the sigma. So, as you can see in the two formulas, the only thing that changed uh, in the second one is the sigma was replaced by the sample standard deviation. If you are going to use the the t test then it will give you the t test is statistic and this can be computed by the similar formula that we use for the z now you might say that if they're the same how come we still have to use either a z or a t now the reason behind is that the z test will require the use of the z table while the t test will require the use of the t table so in essence they might have the same formula in terms of the structure but how you proceed with the hypothesis test will be different. Then, after we know if we have to use the Z or the T test, the next thing that we have to determine is are we going to use two sides or one-sided uh, T test or Z test? Now, in, in determining what type of um, sides we have to use, if it's one side or two-sided T test or Z test, all we need to do is to check our alternative hypothesis H1. This will tell us what type of test we are going to use. If the H1 says not equal to, this will give us or this will lead us to use the two-sided test whether it's a t-test or a z-test. If the H1 involves inequality, either H1 uh, to have a parameter greater than a number or a parameter less than a number, we have to use one-sided tests. Again, either a T test or a Z test depending on the conditions for the population standard deviation and the sample size. So this is linked to the diagrams that I have used in explaining the concept of the significance level. Now for the three diagrams, take note that one of them is a two-sided um, diagram in terms of the uh, critical region while the other two the second and the third diagram only has one region concentrated on a specific side that is on the left or on the right now notice how uh, we I correlated the alternative hypothesis that if it is a not equal to a number then the diagram that you have to use is the two-sided diagram but if it is an inequality a less than a number or greater than a number then you use the corresponding diagram a less than will use the left uh, one-sided uh, diagram on the left and if it's a greater than it's the diagram in which the critical region is on the right Okay, next thing that we need to understand is how to set the decision rule. To understand this easily, let us use an example. 